And that leads us on to the final point. Just as the world was civilized by the spread of the Christian gospel, it will just as easily decline without that influence. You can't separate the benefits from the source of the benefits. God himself is the power that reverses the moral entropy of sin. Again, the next part will explain how, but for now it's clear to see that as soon as we unplug God from his moral law and try to go it alone, we tend towards moral collapse. As we shun God, all the moral improvements from the previous parts will be reversed and we will start to return to the immorality of pre-Christian times. We can visualize it as a very simple graph like this. When we read the records of Israel's Old Testament kings, we can see this pattern blatantly. When Israel was ruled by a good king who brought them close to God, they prospered. But when they were ruled by a bad king who led them away from God, they decayed. As society abandons God, we will see the sanctity of life diminishing, meaning we'll see an increase in senseless violence, killing, abortion, infanticide, and child abandonment. We will start to see marriage devalued and sexual promiscuity rise. Homosexuality will and already is becoming an accepted social norm once again. Pedophilia will increase, selfishness will increase, and inequality between people will rise. Corruption will increase, exploitation and poverty will increase, pride will increase, and education will decrease, creating a situation where people will claim to be wiser than ever, but will instead be more confused. The elderly and widows, instead of being respected, will be disregarded as an irrelevant nuisance. All these things and more are already easily visible in our culture and getting worse. In fact, the rate of decay is quickening, but few outside of the Christian community seem to see the connection between society's decline and our abandonment of God. Few see why the moral compass has stopped working. Few even realize that many of the things I just mentioned are immoral at all now, such as the increasing darkness of the human soul. For clear evidence of what happens when a society banishes God altogether, all we have to do is look at the worst political regimes of the last century. They were mostly communist, that is to say, atheistic. Mao Zedong's communist China, where churches and Christian worship was banned, led to the deaths of 14 to 20 million people. The reign of Pol Pot in communist Cambodia led to the infamous killing fields, where between 1 to 3 million people were wiped out. Kim Il-sung's North Korea led to the deaths of over 3 million civilians and continues to be the most bizarrely oppressive regime in the world. Joseph Stalin in communist Russia killed over 20 million. These God-hating, man-deifying regimes represent the most corrupt and oppressive regimes in world history. And this is the natural end of a nation who removes God from his position of authority and instead makes man the measure of all things. Abraham Lincoln was a man who saw the connection between God and societal health. He famously called a day of humiliation, fasting and repentance for the United States, saying, It is the duty of nations to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God, to confess their sins with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have grown in numbers, wealth and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins, and to pray for forgiveness. Lincoln was acknowledging that nations prosper with God and decline without God. He was also giving voice to the fact that human beings too easily accept the benefits of God's blessings without acknowledging him as the source. We're too quick to imagine that everything we have gained is down to our own wisdom and virtue. We would do well to repent and fast on behalf of our nations who have forgotten God and which have consequently gone into decline. Having said that, I have to warn that the Bible tells us that one day the decline of moral entropy will become terminal. People's hearts will be so hard, their minds will be so confused, laws will be so messed up and God will be so excluded that the world will become a cruel place to be. As the mass of men begin to follow Satan's creed, they will create a hellish planet and this will set the scene for the Antichrist. 
The Bible describes this period as the Great Tribulation, and Jesus says of it, There will be greater anguish than at any time since the world began, and it will never be so great again. Paul wrote to Timothy, saying, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. This is the period of time that will be immediately before Jesus returns, the period we are rapidly hurtling towards, the period of time I humbly suggest that has already begun, where the moral entropy of our sinful natures and our rejection of God will bring us to a point of terminal decline, and at that point Jesus will return.